today? I'm doing good. Good. So I did Bear's Dental today, and I just want to say he did great. Everybody loves him. He's super <laughs> sweet. So with anesthesia, everything went great. Uh, mm -hmm. He had no issues, went down great, woke up just fine. Well, I know we did blood work. Everything mm -hmm. was totally normal. He looked perfect. Um, so when I was doing his cleaning, I would classify his teeth as probably a stage two. Okay. So we have four stages. So mm -hmm. it's kind of right there in the middle, but it's still on the lower end, which is awesome. Um, with that, what you see is usually more plaque buildup, a little bit of that calculus, especially on his especially in the upper back molars mm -hmm. and that's pretty common those salivary glands come out right there and a lot of what calculus is made up of is saliva mm -hmm. um, so when i was doing the dental um when i was feeling around his teeth and all that we didn't have any pockets no tooth decay anything like that which is awesome no recession of the gum line which we definitely don't want that because it's much harder to reverse um, so with that being said, we didn't have to do any extractions or anything. There was no signs of infection, no swelling, inflammation, anything like that. So we aren't going to be staying home with any antibiotics or pain medication. Um, if he does end up acting like he's in a lot of pain, totally give us a call. And we can write you a script for probably carprofen. It's kind mm -hmm. of like our ibuprofen for us. It's just for dogs. Okay. Because they don't do as well with ibuprofen. <clears throat> I do want to show you his before and after pictures. I always like to show him just yeah. because a lot of people, I know for me, I don't notice slow changes as much, mm -hmm. but you'll definitely be able to tell the difference. Okay. At least I hope. So that's wow. his before. So you can see they're all pretty yellow, um, mm -hmm. especially towards the root. And yeah. those back molars are almost completely covered, like light yeah. brown, yellow. We got all that off and now they look pretty white. Wow. And he looks great. Awesome. Again. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> so with that being said, dental cleaning is not a one-time fix-all. Okay. This is probably going to be around a yearly thing. Mm -hmm. um, it's just like us. We go to the dentist probably every six months. Um, yeah. It just comes back. It's not a one-time thing. That being said, there are some preventatives. Mm -hmm. Just like us, you can brush dog's teeth. Okay. Some of them it takes some getting used to, but it's mm -hmm. always a great idea. Like, if you can do it once a day, great. If you can do it once a week, great. Any amount of brushing is going to help. They, we also carry some specific oral health products. Mm -hmm. We have what's called Orvet. They are dental chews. Mm -hmm. um, it's a hard dental chews, and it's just kind of an abrasive, and it helps to keep that tartar buildup off and calculus buildup off. Um, it may still have some plaque buildup, but that's mm -hmm. much easier. It can come off with brushing. Calculus does not come off with brushing. That's yeah. only dental. Um, we also carry several different food brands that are specifically formulated for oral health. Mm -hmm. We carry oh, Hill Science Diet, Purina Pro Plan, Royal Canin, things like that. Mm -hmm. And these are all dry foods. So. When we talk about doing wet foods, a lot of the time, that's when your pet gets older, they're missing teeth, they have some other issue where they have to have a wet food. Maybe they have kidney issues and they just won't eat the dry food, whatever. Mm -hmm. But wet food, it's not abrasive at all. It does not take off that calculus, it doesn't scrape off any plaque, and it really tends to get stuck up in those teeth. Mm -hmm. And that sugar, any nutrients in that food, it's a breeding ground for bacteria. Okay. Calculus is built up mainly of saliva, food particles, and bacteria. So mm -hmm. we really want to prevent that. Now, <clears throat> I know there's some other dental products that I'm sure you've heard of. Greenies is one that's mm -hmm. really popular. It is not a great option. Wow. These are soft chews, which, mm -hmm. like I said, they don't do much. They're they're manufactured as a dental chew, but mm -hmm. they can often just cause more harm than good. Um, wow. Yeah, so definitely stay away from those because they, yeah, being soft, they get stuck in the teeth, mm -hmm. breeding ground for bacteria. Um, do you have any questions for me today? 
Um, yeah. Can you um, kind of like explain a little bit more in detail, like what y'all had to do, like while he was under yeah, anesthesia? Yeah, of course. So as soon as we put him under anesthesia, the first thing we do is we take what's called a periodontal probe. Mm-hmm. It looks like a little stick, tiny, and it's got measurements in millimeters. Mm-hmm. You stick that right under the gum line, just a little bit, just to see if there's any pockets, any mobility in the teeth, because that's what we don't want. Um, a little bit of separation is totally normal, but once it starts getting bigger, that's when we start having issues because that bacteria can get under the tooth and mm-hmm. cause an abscess, and infection, stuff like that. Um, next, we take what's called a curette, and it looks like a little tiny ice cream mm-hmm. scoop. Okay. Um, and it goes just under the gum line to remove any buildup, like deposits or anything mm-hmm. that we can't get to with our other tools because some of them are not safe for subgingival use under the gum line. Um, next we take what's called an explorer. It looks like a little shepherd's hook. Mm-hmm. And we use that to just scrape over the surface of the teeth to look for any soft spots, cavities. I like to use it to see for any mobility as well um, because you can kind of press against the surface of the tooth. It's just like you would at the dentist. They're testing for any soft spots, seeing if your teeth are moving. Mm-hmm. Then we have problems. Um, next we get to the actual cleaning part of it. We take, um, in our clinic, we have an ultrasonic scaler. So it uses vibrations to clean the surface of the teeth. Mm -hmm. And this one, it does not go under the gum line because a lot of vibration under there, it's a very small area and we don't want Mm -hmm. that. Um, We also use water in that scaler just to keep it cool because if it gets too hot, friction, vibration causes friction. Mm -hmm. And if it gets too hot, then it kills the tooth itself Mm -hmm. because it heats up that pulp. We don't want that. We can go back in with a hand scaler if we need to. A lot of those back teeth have a lot of little ridges that the scaler can't get into. Mm -hmm. So we use the hand scaler to get all of those. Um, Then we'll rinse out the mouth with a very dilute chlorhexidine. Um, Mm -hmm. Chlorhexidine, we usually use it as a surgical scrub, but it's really just antibacterial that we can use in the mouth to clean it all out. And it also kind of helps us to visualize anything we might have missed. and then we'll go in with a polish, and then that will take off any of those micro abrasions from either an explorer, scaler, what have you, because all of those micro abrasions, you can catch bacteria in those, and that's mm-hmm. what causes dental disease. Okay. So then we'll rinse it again, and you're all done. Okay. So it's pretty easy. Um, there's minimal blood. Yeah. Usually, it's if the teeth are worse, there'll be a little bit more blood. But okay. he's pretty nice. Awesome. Um, so how much of a problem is dental disease if he was to get something worse? Okay, so dental disease, it may not seem like a big problem, but it can actually cause issues in the heart, liver, and kidneys. Oh, wow. Because as that bacteria builds up the mouth, they're swallowing it all the time. And that mm-hmm. has to go through your digestive system, goes through your liver, through your kidneys. You can even get bladder infections from dental disease. Wow. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that, and that's why prevention is so, so important. Okay. Yep. Yeah, and then um, I know you talked about like us brushing like his teeth. Um, mm-hmm. Do we just use like water and like a toothbrush? Or? Yeah, um, they actually do make doggy toothpaste. Yep. A lot of time it's like chicken or beef flavored, which honestly this sounds disgusting. But yeah. They like chicken and beef. Okay. Um, but even if it's just, they have those little baby toothbrushes that mm-hmm. have the little bristles on the finger. That works yeah. too. But they also just a toothbrush of any size is great. Okay. Just anything you can do to get that going. Awesome. And then do I need to wait any time to feed him after this? Um, you don't necessarily have to wait. I know it's afternoon now, so he's probably going to have a few hours before dinner. Yeah. I would probably give him a little bit less than you normally would, maybe half, quarter the amount that you normally would. Okay. It's totally normal if he doesn't eat tonight. A lot of the times mm-hmm. after anesthesia, they're just not up to it. Okay. If he doesn't start eating tomorrow... That's definitely a sign that something may be wrong, and you definitely want to give us a call, okay? okay? And like I said, if he's having, like, super in pain, just give us a call. We can get that script for you. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I think Anything that's else? it. All right, so I just want to make sure he's probably still a little woozy. Just yeah. want to make sure you remember that. He might be drooling a little bit. That's also okay. kind of normal because okay. he's been in his mouth for a while. Yeah. I'll go grab him for you. All right, thank you. Hi there. Oh, thank you so much. Have a good day. Thank you.